Live from the offices of Great River Investments in the beautiful city of Burlington, Iowa, this is the Marvin Knows Finances Show. I am your host, Marvin Thompson, your certified financial planner, and joining me today is Joe Jolin with Jolin Media in West Burlington, Iowa, and Todd Sladke, CPA and my partner at Great River Investments. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to listen in, and for all your listeners on Google Podcasts and Spotify, please don't forget to click the subscribe button, and if you prefer to see how we make the show come together, please check out our YouTube channel, Marvin Knows Finances, and click subscribe there as well. Just like the last and every time, I have to take care of a little business before we get moving too far forward to please my compliance department. Uh, Marvin Thompson is an investment advisor representative and a registered investment advisor with Brokers Financial member SIPC. Opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Brokers Financial. The topics discussed and opinions given are not intended to address the specific needs of any listener. Great River Investments LLC does not offer legal or tax advice. Listeners are encouraged to discuss their financial needs with the appropriate professional regarding your individual circumstances. So guys, welcome. Thank you for joining me again. Thank Thanks you. For having very me. much appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to this topic because I'm not going to say much today. <laughs> I'm actually going to just uh, sit back and ask a bunch of questions. So that's kind of cool. But before we get into our topic, which will be travel ideas, um, the question of the week was how much life insurance do I need? So met with a young couple this week. This topic definitely came up. You know, they're expecting their first, uh, their first little one. And um, something we, we definitely want to talk about with them. So I love this question, um, and there are many different answers that we can give you. But my favorite is a simple one, as much as you can afford. You know, um, I always say I've never heard a widower or a beneficiary say, dang, they left me too much money. It's never happened. So in all seriousness, though, there's a couple of rules or a couple of things you can do to determine how much you should own. Uh, first is something simple, the 10 times rule. Uh, 10 times your income is a simple calculation. So if you make $100,000 a year, a million dollars of life insurance. Okay. The second one is to actually go down and break the um, life insurance need analysis into four sections. Um, final expenses, mortgage reduction, college savings, and income replacement. Those are kind of the four things that we would look at. Um, this type of analysis is normally done with the help of an insurance agent or a financial planner. And once again, as always, please do whatever is in your best interest when you do this. Okay. So in the, so, uh, can I just ask about that one? Yeah. Um, the needs analysis part. I mean, so I see that and it's like, well, my kids are out of the house and yep. my, I don't have a need for college savings anymore. Yep. Um, my mortgage is paid off. I don't have a need to cover my mortgage anymore. So does life insurance need go down over time or it possibly? Does. It does. And that's why when we talk to people about life insurance, we always talk about the distinction between permanent and temporary needs, term needs, essentially. Um, mortgage reduction, college savings, those are basically needs that disappear over a period of time. However, income replacement, you know, you might want to replace your income for a spouse or for your children. That may become more of a permanent need for you. And of course, final expenses are always there. Funerals, just like everything else, jump in prices over a period of time due to inflation and just cost of their business. So um, so that some of those things may be more permanent needs, but as time moves on, yes, you're definitely right. That net need may be diminished. Okay. okay? So... All right, guys, our idea, this our, our topic of the week this week is travel ideas, and I'm sitting here with two gentlemen who love to travel. Um, the reason we're talking about this, and we know it's not really a financial matter, but when, when clients come to us and say, you know, one of my main goals in retirement is to travel, and in doing a little bit of research, I realized that travel is actually one of the top 10 responses given to financial advisors about um, what they want to do. So personally, I'm not a big traveler. Um, like I said, both Todd and Joe do like to travel. So we thought we'd lighten it up a little bit today with a different topic and let them describe some of their favorite ideas of how and where to travel. So guys, um, I don't care which one of you goes first, but what is it about traveling that you both enjoy so much? You want me to go first? Sure. Uh, for, for, for me, I'm, I'm a late bloomer when it comes to traveling. I, we grew up uh, not doing a whole lot of travel. And so I probably was on that uh, side of not, really wasn't that important to me. Uh, my wife traveled with her family growing up uh, singing various churches. You know, so you and, probably talk about the background of yeah, your wife's family. Yeah, my wife's family is a, a very musical, and uh, they traveled as a family singing gospel uh, music. And so she was used to traveling. So uh, it was always important to her. And I thought, okay, well, I, I, as a spouse, that I probably better start doing this. And I grew up, um, some of the fun thing, things that we did was camp. We didn't have 
a whole lot as far as money to be able to just fly places that we wanted to go. But uh, we did have a large military tent that we could take with us camping, and that was kind of our way to get out. So uh, for me, it's just uh, being able to spend time with the family and, I guess, see new places. It's really, really in a nutshell. What about you? Um, We really picked up our travel maybe the last... uh I don't know, five to 10 years that I was working and it kind of coincided with a bit of empty nest. Uh, you know, we did travel with our kids on some, you know, try to do once a year kind of summer thing that was bigger, but as they reach middle school age and so on, it was like their friends were more important than some of that. So we didn't get it in every year. And sometimes it's hard to schedule around the sports and all of that. So it was really after our kids started um, their college years that we, uh, my wife and I really, more got a bug for travel uh, and and an interest. And um, while I was working, it was great uh, to have that look look ahead to something fun, having something on the books to look forward to and be an outlet. And um, half the fun, I think, is actually planning the trip and knowing what you're going to get yourself into. And so we've just really enjoyed that. And then uh, we've continued on really up through the beginning of COVID. And then we've really kind of stayed home for the last two years. But. Great, great lead in statement because uh, one of my questions is how do you go about planning these trips? Because I've known you both for quite a while and I know you've gone some pretty cool places. So how do you decide? I mean, this is a big world. Go how ahead. do you guys decide where to go? Yeah, for us, um, we enjoy doing it, but we also have four kids that are very involved. Um, and we realize that unless we plan way in advance we're not going to we're not going to do it i'm 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 probably not the planner my wife is is more the planner but um we also just told where to go it's exactly right okay Uh this is where i'm going no but if if we i we realize if we don't plan then we don't get to enjoy it so now we actually in typically no march time or so as summer's kind of we're all just wanting to get out of the house anyway we sit down with the calendar and start knocking weekends out and and so now I enjoy it is enough that I'm already a year or two in, in advance uh, mm-hmm. already thinking. And um, so that's kind of what we do. But then also now uh, with my wife's work, she can she gets some travel for CPE credits. As she's right. a CPA as well. And so uh, and then there's also some things through her work that she has to do for some traveling into some exotic places. So we're going to take advantage of some of that, too. Nice. Right. Yeah. We had a little bit of that, too, with my work. Um, we would travel for conferences or meetings or, edu- you know, computer software kind of education kinds of things. So in a lot of cases, my wife could come along with me on that, especially after the kids were a little more, more uh, mature and able to stay on their own or out of the house. Um, as far as, um, making a plan, I, we took, uh, we took a cruise three years after we were married, 1987, that ship has now sunk to the bottom of the ocean. That oh, wow. ship is no longer here, but, <laughs> like um, both figuratively but, but yeah, it's gone, yeah, wow. but it was, it was a great, uh, introduction to that. I, we drove up to that ship and it was the big red boat and it was tied to Disney at the time and, uh, 1987. And then we, we got a taste for cruising and we did not do it again for another 15 years. And 15 years later, we took our kids on, on a cruise following year we went with some friends and then the bug really stuck with Todd not as much K but <laughs> but definitely Todd and I, like I am a planner so and I am a deal shopper mm-hmm. so I found uh, some websites that are uh, very specific to cruising and I would keep looking at them looking at them looking at them and I I there was one morning I came into the bedroom at seven in the morning this is more detail than you want to know but <laughs> I, I basically said, I mean, this I was, like, was where's he going with this? I don't this was November. Farther. This was November, and, and her birthday's in January. I came in and said uh, she wasn't even awake yet. I said, "How would you like to go to St. Thomas on your on your birthday?" Well, I, you know, I'm just waking up here. She's just waking up. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know, how can sure. I say no to that? Okay, we're going. I just booked it. We're, you know, because it's such a good deal. It was yeah. like an incredible deal. Um, and I, I can talk about cruising for a long time because I think they're efficient, Better both in money and in yeah. time. Yeah, lengthen, <laughs> lengthen the podcast. Yeah. I love it. I'll have to talk to you about that after because I'm interested. Yeah. Well, that's going to be one of my next questions. What's your favorite way to travel? So, Todd, you're a cruise man. For me, it's it, for and actually, um, we've done 15 cruises now, and my wife Holy and my God. wife has my wife has adopted. The, my love for cruising and uh, she gets a little bit seasick so so we take a little bit of medicine for that i don't really at all so maybe that's why i like it better but there is a there's a huge part about cruising 
um, I talked a little bit about the money part of it, that it, it is really an efficient way, an economical way um, in money. But in terms of time and enjoyment combination, it, I don't know how you beat it. Because one, one of the examples I use all the time is if you go to a, for, you know, a different city that you're not familiar with, if we, you drop me down in the middle of New York City and you put me in a hotel room and you said, okay, you're going to be here for a week or you're going to be here for five days, go have a good time. I would spend while I'm there many hours trying to figure out where where is that great restaurant that we should go to where where is that or somebody recommended it to me how do I get there and I would spend th- we would spend three or four hours of our travel figuring that out with cruising they drop you off at nine in the morning in a great island destination let's say at five o'clock you get back on you run up and take a shower maybe or have a drink and sit on the balcony and watch the sail away. And at six o'clock you go down and have dinner and at eight o'clock you're at a show and it's all within a thousand foot uh length of walk it's cool it mm-hmm. is it is so, and and it feels like america when i i think of america is still safe but um but i mean maybe not so much anymore but it feels like you're entering america when you get back on that ship at night even though the place you're in is foreign to you hmm. that's cool what about you? Uh, for us, we've kind of adopted the uh, um, national parks, hitting a lot of national parks and traveling, again, with four kids. And, um, you know, as far as with limited income, it was really what do we do to kind of maximize uh, what we can see and, you know, how far we can go and things like that. And I've always been an outdoors guy. I like hunting. I like being outside. And so uh, for, for me and my kids have kind of had to come, you know, like Todd's on the cruising for me, it's like, we got to hit a, what national park are we going to go to this year? So that's how are you getting there. That's exactly what I was going to So that's, so well, it's leading right into the next one. So, uh, again, for us, it's, it's, uh, saving money on as far as flying, um, as well as hoteling it and, uh, and food, um, to save money for us. It's, we, we fixed up an old Airstream, 1963 airstream uh that i've had the privilege of fixing up and being able to use and so it it, it pulls nice behind our vehicle Uh, i don't i'm not a mechanic so i i I don't like things with motors typically so i know i can not invest in a vehicle we've already talked about debt and uh, expenses in that (laughs) regard so i'm not going to talk about an investment to you guys on a vehicle but uh, at least just having to keep up one vehicle to pull a travel trailer and uh the nice thing about that too is we can we can go to Aldi's and oh, I sh- sorry, I shouldn't name drop, but mm-hmm. we can go to the the local grocery store and 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 fill up our camper prior, and yeah. uh, it has heat and power and air conditioning and. It's Don't just you have our, like a barbecue grill or a smoker oh, yeah. or something? Oh yeah, we have a little in there? tabletop smoker and a tabletop griddle. I mean, oh, we're keep in mind, up. when his whole family goes, it's six people. Yeah. Plus, don't you normally meet other families? Yeah, we in typically the places other you go? people that yeah that, that have kids our same age. They like to hang yeah. out. But oh, with that tabletop smoker, you can <laughs> throw a rack or two of ribs in it and then go hiking and come back and. Oh, and I just, actually did uh, Joe's uh, ribs one time at oh. home on my smoker, and he's got it down to an art form, just yeah. nice. timing wise and temperature it and everything. Because else. you you got me into the smoking, so I have to give uh-huh. you credit for that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Awesome. So, all right, guys, uh, favorite places you have visited? Uh, Joe obviously likes the state parks. Is there one or national park? Sorry, is there one in particular? Well, I, it, it's kind of leaning. I, I really like Glacier Glacier National Park. Was which is was, where I don't even know where that is. Uh, Montana, Wyoming, gotcha. Montana. Yeah, because in Yellowstone kind of going up in that way too. But, you know, funny thing. Well, then now it's kind of, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place, but now it's kind of graduated to, uh, or graduated. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gravi- anyway. Gravitated? Gravitated. Gravitated. One of those G. Yeah. Graduated. Anyways, to, uh, we've actually pulled our Airstream down to the Florida Keys now twice, and we're going again in uh, December. So it's, it's a little. How, how do you drive that far with four kids well, in the we, car? We, again, we plan, you know. And I you dope take, them up in some capacity. Uh, no, actually, they're, they're, they've been traveling since. I, I, I'm, you know, six hours away from where I grew up and where my uh, extended family is. So they've, they're used to six hour drive up to Minneapolis. So, but we'll break it up into, you know, six to eight hour drives Mm -hmm. and pick a place that's also kind of cool and work our way down there. And then you show up, you know, you leave here and it's five degrees in December and you, you roll in with a camper, your own little apartment in the Florida Keys around Christmas time. Oh, it's just nothing like it. I love it. Anyway, it's awesome. What about yours? Um, man, we've been a lot of places favorite. Uh, I, I mean, I would tie it to cruising, although we've been to Hawaii as well. Hawaii is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, 
definitely we had our family with us on that trip which was which great we stayed in air airbnb another yeah. another mm. very efficient mm. uh way to travel you can do meals there and way less expensive than a hotel room and you yeah. actually have some area to gather and yep. grill out if you want and so on that was great probably what we would i i don't know if both Kay and i would end on this i think so but our, our most beautiful site in the world is santorini greece Again, it was on a cruise. It's the iconic picture you see of Greece um, with the blue roofed dome mm. churches. That picture, um, those blue roof domes are um, are really only on that island. Um, that was a fantastic trip. It was like 10 nights, uh, started in Rome, ended in Rome. And um, we really felt like it was a little bit of, uh, for, for people that know the Bible a little bit, it was a, uh, one of Paul's journeys basically, because we stopped at Rhodes, um, Greece, Ephesus. Hmm. Uh, if you've heard of the letter to the Ephesians, that's where he was writing a church at Ephesus. We stopped at Corinth. Hmm. Uh, so we saw Corinth, Greece, and Rome. So Paul was in all of those places. So out of the maybe seven stops we were in, five of them were places that, nice. that the hmm. Apostle Paul had been. Cool. So it, really it, cool. was, it was a really meaningful trip for us. And, yeah. uh, and just... Uh, yeah, a lot of prettiness, and, and and again, I don't think there's a better way to see like an island country like Greece than by cruise ship. Yeah. You, hmm. you 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 travel overnight, and every morning you wake up, or I always woke up prior to getting there because I love the arrival, and you just get up before sunrise and watch your arrival, and you're in these beautiful places, and then you get to spend a day there, which a day is usually not enough. But the next day you're going to somewhere great again. That's pretty cool. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So I hate to even ask this question, but is there any place that's been bad? Like maybe we should even approach throwing some cities under the bus. But have you ever had any mm. bad trips on your travels? You have any? Not really. Uh, I have one that comes to mind. All right, go for it. You, yeah. Um, we went to Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. And supposed to be the one just place a, I've been to. <laughs> really, it was wonderful. <laughs> supposed to, and it was wonderful. The beaches, the pool, the all-inclusive place we stayed yeah. seemed wonderful. But then, as we were leaving, we 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 learned more about this all-inclusive place. Some of the people were on our bus out, and some of them were on our plane out. But several people had had thefts in that hotel that we were in. This all-inclusive hotel. Hmm. And the management of the thefts, thefts out, oh, of, okay. out of like safes, like, oh, no like hotel safes. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much, you know, came to the conclusion it was employees that were, um, and, and we knew that they, they had little devices or cameras or something that they knew when you were out of your room because um, you know, they just did. I mean, mm -hmm. as soon as you were gone from your room, they knew it. And uh, we, we, we were not harmed by that, but but uh, several people on that same week that we were there had thefts mm -hmm. out of their hotel safes, like eight hundred dollars or jewelry, and that's kind management, of management mm -hmm. didn't want to do anything about it. Yeah, yeah we. That's funny because that's the one place that uh, my wife and I flew to, kind of like mm -hmm. our first destination place, and the all inclusive resort was great, um, and we even did a little excursion thing that was great. Um, but after after the trip, I remember saying, I really like this, but I don't necessarily feel like I have to come back mm -hmm. i mean it was kind of like uh, me at once everything's good well it, it had some unique history mm -hmm. and uh it had it it had some things i'm definitely glad we went but uh it also part of me just felt like i kind of wanted to be part of the united states yeah it, i mean the food was 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 good um but yeah it just it didn't it didn't make me think oh man i i got to come back yeah. here we got some of that feeling in the airport just uh yeah. the, that airport just seemed uh, that airport's uh, mm -hmm. sketchy mm -hmm. yeah sketchy is a good word a and, lot of timeshares you know, being sold through that airport mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. armed uh, armed security guys standing mm -hmm. around and uh, yep. Yeah. And they didn't speak our language i mean what mm -hmm. you know everybody should speak our language if we go to their country right mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we do find that that uh, that doesn't happen. Stupid Americans expect that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. So COVID, how much has COVID changed your mm -hmm. travel? I mean, has it affected you at all? Because like with you camping in your own place, does it really bother you at all? Mm -mm. No, I mean, if, if anything, COVID, for other reasons, caused our, our family, even with our kids being home more. We got closer as a family. So uh, it actually helped with um, wanting to get out you know and we're also fortunate too that we have some acreage uh, to where the kids were didn't feel so bound up and i know i'm getting kind of on a, a rabbit trail there but 
Uh, but it's still, even though we, we had things to do around the farm, we still wanted to get out and camp and experience some of that stuff. But we didn't run into any, because of maybe, I guess, that nature of what we did, uh, we have, we didn't run into any yeah. things that we couldn't do. Excellent. It's, it's changed for us greatly. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. as, a, as a family, uh, we're fine. We're great. We, we enjoy each, each other's company, and we spend a lot of time together. Um, but we have not been we have not stayed in a hotel room in a year and a half and we stayed in hotel rooms every month um Mm -hmm. either on trips up to our kids and back or um just to go somewhere for the weekend and we just we just haven't we just uh we have a young family with uh, little kids and we've just taken covid very seriously and we've been pretty locked down yeah but not in a negative sense Mm -hmm. i mean we Mm -hmm. we and um the thing we have right or wrong, um, I mean, really right, but our timing was good on it, is we acquired a camper, um, a small travel trailer, uh, you would call it a couple's camper, because it really isn't set up for a family, it's set up for for two people comfortably. And we do use that uh, to get up to Minnesota, and we do some local camping with that, and we've done a lot more of that in the last two years. So we're really glad we have that, kind of, and it's so easy um, like you say, we just stop at a grocery store on our way out of town, kind of load up the refrigerator and the cupboards, and depending on how long we're going to be gone, you know, mm-hmm. if we're only going to be gone two or three nights, then we we don't even worry about, you know, we just take what we have on hand. But if we um, if we're going to be gone for an extended period, you know, we just either shop when we get there or or shop before we leave. Pretty cool. All right, uh, future trips, guys. Where are you going to next? Mm. Uh, we, for our family wants to hit the East coast, East coast, um, to hit, uh, like Northeast. Yep. Northeast. Um, um, Acadia national park is on our list. Uh, the wife and I, we, we were thinking really heavy about, uh, taking a two week trip to pull our camper all the way out to Yosemite. But then we realized we think that the kids would just enjoy just going up to, you know, our local campground here. And so the wife and I are going to fly out probably to just do that ourselves. But uh, then we're going to the Keys uh, in December. Nice. Again. Nice. nice. Yeah. We'd like to see more of the United States. Um, we've, we've done a lot of cruising. So we've, we've been to Europe several times through that and the Caribbean several times. Um, we did two times we did the same repositioning trip. So repositioning on a cruise is when they end a season in one area and they need to start a season in another area. They it's a one way trip on the cruise. You don't, you start in one port and you end up in the other. So mm. we've taken that trip twice where we started in Puerto Rico, where we're done with the Caribbean season. And we ended up in New York city oh, that's and cool. stopped in Bermuda for two nights. And that, that was a you know really great trip, all weather dependent. Both times our weather has been excellent. So, you know, no rough seas and all of that, but that, that doesn't always have to be that way. Um, but future, we'd like to do more United States travel, some of it involving the camper, um, I I don't know that I want to go to the Keys pulling that thing. So I <laughs> I don't want to end up in any large city with it. I know yeah. that. So I would yeah, really we plan w- around that. Really too. want to yeah. avoid large cities with it. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine driving it. It's it's really not bad, but it's mm-hmm. it's not a car. So right. it's uh, you're thinking about having something behind you all the time. But we kind of consider that like our tri-states camper. We're from Minnesota. We camp in Iowa. We have a daughter in Wisconsin we kind of consider it our tri-state mm-hmm. and we try to hit different parks mm-hmm. that we know about in the, that region. And, you know, it's really all within 400 miles of home and nice. nice. Yeah. And that's what I, I, I would just, a, a quick plug. We, I originally thought that you had to go all the way to Glacier. You had to go all the way to Yellowstone. You had to go out to, to experience the cool stuff. And I think it was after our third trip. And I think it was after the Glacier trip. I said, you know, let's just, hit the tri uh, for us hit the tri-state area and see what we have around our area and we've just been blown away by some of the parks just the state parks and yeah. uh, same with our friends who live in alabama they kind of did the same thing and some of the pictures that they show of waterfalls and just beautiful state parks mm-hmm. has caused us kind of in recently to hit hit the, the yeah. d- different parks around iowa and nice. uh, minnesota same thing mm-hmm. so there's just some beautiful state parks that you don't have to go all the way to those places mm-hmm. so it's worth just kind of rediscovering that too when when our kids were really young and we lived in northern minnesota we had uh, a small fifth wheel camper and we did weekend camping in the minnesota area and you know love the state parks there and and uh, it was all great we moved here um 20 plus years ago to Iowa, Southern Iowa. And we sold our camper because we we're like, uh, who camps in Iowa? You mm-hmm. know what? Mm-hmm. We don't have anywhere to store it. So we got rid of it. And 
now that we're back into camping again and seeing the beautiful parks just right in our area, mm -hmm. our favorite park right now is within one hour of here. It's mm -hmm. down at uh, Kiyosakwa. Mm -hmm. We just love going there. And it's like, wow, did we make a mistake there? Yeah. We, we should have kept camping yeah. with yeah, our kids. Yeah, for us, it's, it's the uh, uh, Makwokota Caves. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. just it's a great the, park. Yeah. I mean, when the kids walk through there, it's just like walking through caves and you're just thinking, this is in Iowa? I yeah. mean, just yeah, beautiful. There's some really beautiful country it's right awesome. here. It's awesome. So uh, we are a finance show, so no, I yes, ask the question. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Where's oh, the yeah. best places to find the good deals? Mm. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Airbnb. Yeah. I don't know if those are good deals or not. And then you mentioned some websites. You don't have to be specific with which ones. I'll be very how specific. Do you, how do you find them? I'll be very specific. Yeah, I gotta write with this the, down. Do you got a pen for me? Uh, yeah, I do. With the cruise website, um, and all you have to give them is your email, and they don't bug you. But it's it's called vacationstogo.com, and it um, separates out into uh, both cruise travel, river cruise travel, and also land tour type travel. So they do all of those, and you you just you just focus and, and I will tell you about cruise shopping you um, there are so many cruise lines and so many routes and so many destinations that it is overwhelming to try to focus so we have taken out one variable there we have a cruise line which we prefer and we love it and it's uh, I consider it like um, you know, there's Rolls Royce level cruising and they're going to be $10,000 per person per week. And then there's, um, you know, super economy Ford Fiesta cruising and they're going to be $700 per person per week. And then there's what this cruise line that we like so well, I consider it like a Buick or a small Cadillac. It's, um, it's priced fairly, very fairly for what you get. And it, and it has all the amenities of a, a very luxurious cruise line. And you might spend twelve hundred dollars per person per week on that and that that kind of is my goal number if we can get um uh about a hundred dollars a day per person um in especially in europe but but even in the caribbean um that is a a bargain so if you can get to you know you do a 10-day trip uh to europe for um even you know fifteen hundred dollars per person um, for that 10 day period and add on some airfare, you can do a fabulous trip for $5,000. Hmm. That's nice. And what yeah. was the website again? Uh, vacations to go.com. Vacations and that has to the go cruise line in there too? Yeah. The, okay. cru the cruise line, I'll, I'll endorse them. I've done some podcasts with them. Um, Celebrity Cruise Line is, it's a part of Royal Caribbean, but Celebrity Cruise Line is who we use. It, for, for young families, there's probably not as much to do. There's no mm -hmm. giant water slides and roller skating rinks and things like that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, but for, you know, the, the young elderly like us, um, it works great. The young and mm -hmm. elderly. Yeah. Well, like that's, that well, the wife wants to take all the kids to uh, Disney. Yeah. And I am just, oh, my it's goodness. It's not that bad. It is, well, I want, and someone said, "Oh, you got to do the Disney cruise." Yeah, Disney cruises are expensive. Oh God, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you want to hear the bottom that. Line or not. <laughs> they have a name that, uh, yeah, they. they Can I get they, it for uh, like a hundred dollars per person per day? No, yeah. maybe two hundred dollars per person per day. That's about oh, right. Yeah, so sorry. Well, guys, say hey, thanks for luck. Let's <laughs> talking about your travels and your ideas and what you do and everything else. Um, you know, folks who are listening to this, like I said, Todd and Joe have been a lot of places. You know. <laughs> Our Todd's been on 15 cruises by itself, so not to mention all the camping and stuff that he does. Oh, it wasn't so, by myself. My wife. Well, that's what I meant. You know, sometimes you take your wife. All right, just yeah. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, my heartfelt thanks goes out to all of you for listening today. Hope you enjoyed the show, and as usual, a special thanks to Joe and Todd for uh, joining me today and uh, giving us their input today. Uh, we want to hear from you. Please reach out to me by either giving me a call at 319-576-2264 or visiting my website at greatriverinvestments.com and going to the Contact Us section of the site. I or a member of my team will be in touch with you shortly to discuss our next steps together. Thank you again for listening to the Marvin Knows Finances Show. This is Marvin Thompson, your certified financial planner. Have a great day.